All right, welcome to our uh, latest Buff Zone video, and I'm pleased to be joined by Andy Rickhoff. Did I say that right? You got me. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Uh, you covered North Dakota State for uh, the flag flagship station out there, um, 1660, and uh, a student. You you a graduate of North Dakota State, and you've been covering them for a little while, and so um, you've seen some good football. I sure have. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Brian. <laughs> First off, I appreciate being on with you. And I've seen plenty of good football. It's interesting because I was a student from 2015 and 2016. So only two years at NDSU. I did two years at a, at a different school beforehand. And everybody that came to NDSU in that time and still to this day is like, I'm clearly the good luck charm. Like I've been yeah. here. We've only lost one game since I've been here. We've won four <laughs> championships and we've beaten this team or that team. And everyone thinks they're kind of the, uh, the good luck charm, but there's been some, some really good football here for over a decade at this point and the national title to speak for themselves. Well, it, it has to feel like a, a long title drought for North Dakota state. Um, you know, the last yeah. two seasons, they haven't won it, uh, you know, and uh, for, to give uh a Colorado fans, a perspective. The last time North Dakota State went two straight years without a title, Colorado was still in the Big 12. So they hadn't even gone to the Pac 12 right. yet. So um, it was 2009 and 10. So uh, there's been a lot of titles, but um, obviously North Dakota State's still been good. They were in the championship game two years ago. Uh, they lost in the semifinals uh, uh, in overtime this last year. So it's not like they've taken a slide. Uh, but what's the feeling around that program as they've gone a couple of years uh, without a title? Yeah, it's it's uncharted territory, I guess you could say that yeah, you've gone two years without one and the years where you didn't win one, like they were in the semifinals versus James Madison in 16 and that one was at home and that one was a really weird feeling because you had won a number of them in a row already and to not get to a championship game was just it was uncommon almost at that point. Um, that's what happens when you're on the streak that they've they've been on but to be two years without one. Uh, that that is different. And I think the, the fans were not like restless or upset but there's expectations and rightfully so there's expectations at NDSU, like any program, you know, if we, we always kind of compare it to Alabama a little bit, just in terms of how many games you have won, not that, you know, NDSU where they beat Alabama, that's a different, <laughs> different conversation, obviously, but yeah. you know, the expectations at Alabama going into every year, especially when you had Nick Saban was win the title or else it's, it's kind of a failed season, it's kind of the same around NDSU. Like that's the expectation every single year going in is, you have the players you need to win a championship. Now, South Dakota State's been really, really good these last couple of years. They've had some loaded lineups and, and rosters, and mm -hmm. COVID helps that with the, the six-year player and, and all that. But um, they've just been good. They've been better. And that was, uh, it was a, you know, not just the games not getting to, to Frisco or not winning a championship, but the games against South Dakota State as well, losing some of those ones here recently in the regular season. They've been the yeah. better team. So NDSU has got to get back on top. But – uh, the Bison is still one of the preeminent teams at the the FCS level and definitely the most recognizable one still to this point. Yeah, you, you put yeah. the Bison logo up, you put the helmet up there. People know Carson Wentz, Easton Stick. They they know the names and they they know the success. Yeah, well, certainly they've been uh, the Alabama of the FCS level, right? And even better, they've won more titles than that. Um, and like Alabama, um, North Coast State has a new coach this year. Uh, you know, didn't win the title last year and has a new coach this year, and so. Um, what are the expectations this year? I've seen a couple of early polls where one North Dakota state was number one, the other one, they were number two. So is the expectation, even with a new coach, Tim Polisek, um, is the expectation still we're going to win a national title? I think that's the expectation. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's NDSU that that should be the expectation. I know that's what the, the coaching staff wants and that's what the players want. They, there's a couple of players that haven't gotten a national title here while they've been at NDSU yet. And they'd like to get one uh, for yeah. sure. So that is the expectation. But I think if you're just to ask fans around here, they just want to see improvement on what last year was. And mm -hmm. they know that's the first year with a new coach. Uh, Tim Polisek's got a long history with NDSU. He is a, a bison through and through. You could say that's what we say around here. Uh, was the offensive coordinator when they beat uh, Iowa in 2016. Has won multiple national championships as a coach on staff. Mm -hmm. His first chance to, to be a head coach, though. And it's gone great so far. I think our fans would just say, want to see improvement we, we want to beat sdsu we want to beat that team uh we yeah. host them this year we want to beat uh, und north dakota the team that's uh you know an hour up the road from us here in fargo we want to beat them and we host them this year uh, they want to see improvement and get back to some of that that dominance especially on the defensive end uh, that ndsu was so accustomed to to for, for a while and if that results in a national championship great um, but the expectation is definitely to at the very very least be back in frisco i would say 
Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Tim? I mean, he was the offensive coordinator at Wyoming. And so uh, there are some fans on the front range here that might know of him a little bit, um, you know, if they're Wyoming fans, but um, he comes from Wyoming where he worked under Craig Bowl, who was a former North Dakota state coach, right. um, you know, and Craig obviously had a lot of success at NDSU. Uh, you know, what's your feeling and what are fans feeling about Tim at this point? Excited. I think he yeah. brings a lot of energy. That's the main thing when you've talked to fans, or you've talked to people around the program, what do you think of, of Tim Polisek energy that, that what he brings to the program? And I think to the community, he does a great job of getting out in Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo, the surrounding yeah. areas up here and the region as a whole, and especially the state of North Dakota about getting out there and, and engaging with the fan base and wanting to, you know, kind of you know, like every program you go through COVID, no one was allowed in the stadium. So, you know, everyone kind of got away from coming to a stadium, like trying to re-engage that fan base a bit, continue yeah. to bring them in, make the Fargo Dome a really tough place to play. Um, that's what he's doing a great job at so far. His spring game was a nice attendance and he was mic'd up for it and, and running around talking with people and the, the energy and excitement is definitely there for him and for this season. And the, the most impressive thing he has done now, he is a Bison guy. Like, fans know him. Past players will vouch for him and tell you all the great things because he was, you know, the offensive coordinator here and other positions on the staff before that and a couple of different steps uh, and, and uh, different eras here with, with the Bison. And then, like you said, went on to Iowa, went on to Wyoming before coming back here to be the head coach. But the current players didn't know him. He was yeah. gone for too long where the current players here did not know who Tim Polisek was. So it was not an internal hire. Now, it is – a, a bison guy, a person that knows NDSU and that the fans know really well. But in this era of the transfer portal and man, new coaches coming in, how many times do you see, you guys just saw it with Dion. I mean, right. mm -hmm. you bring a new coach, everybody's gone. It's a whole new team. And there were a few transfers, a few players that have hit the portal, but especially right after Tim was hired, he kept everybody. You have yeah. a experienced quarterback in Cam Miller stayed on. Cole Wisniewski, All-American at safety, could have gone anywhere. I know he had offers to go to a bunch of schools at the FBS level. Stayed on with NDSU. Uh, Gray Zabel, a guy that's probably going to get drafted in the NFL from the, the left tackle spot, or at least as an offensive lineman, he had offers to go other places. Tim Polisek got him to stay and, and everybody else to, to buy into his vision and his passion, I think, for NDSU and what this program means to him and his family uh, in terms of his coaching heritage and, and career. And he got all those guys to stay. I, I think that speaks volumes to the job that he has been able to do so far in this era where everybody leaves and leaves quickly. He has yeah. gotten everyone to stay. Yeah. And I think that was one of the bigger surprises in doing some research on NDSU was that there was not a lot of portal activity um, yeah. in or out. I mean, it's, it's a lot of the same team and the, you know, the holes that are, that need to be filled. A lot of them look like they're being filled by guys who have waited their turn at NDSU and not necessarily at, a, at another place. And um, I would have thought that there would have been a lot of guys that have left and, and gone to other places, but there's, there's just not. And so uh, these guys clearly uh, you know, love NDSU. Um, I, I want to start with uh, uh, player wise with Cam Miller, uh, the quarterback, fifth year senior. Um, I think he started 38 consecutive games. He's been there a little while. Um, you know, what do you feel about him? And it seems like just looking at his stats, he's gotten a little bit better every year. Absolutely has. And and you talk about the expectations, how it's tough to be a head coach at NDSU because you go into every year like, okay, win a championship or it's a fail. Yeah. Imagine the expectations for a quarterback. You have the guys that your fans would know of with Carson Wentz, and it led into Easton Stick, who's a backup with the Chargers right now, but is the winningest quarterback all time at the FCS level. And then it went to Trey Lance, who yeah. only had one year as a starter and was a top three draft pick off one year of, of tape and film. And Cam Miller had to you know, step into those shoes. And he's had as interesting of a career as maybe anybody has. It, it really is an interesting one because he comes in as a freshman. Trey Lance is still on the team. And then it's the pandemic year. Trey Lance is gone. He's going to the draft. He only had one game in the fall for us uh, against Central Arkansas. And then Trey Lance is gone. The guy that he thought maybe I'll, I'll learn from him for a couple of years. Well, he's gone. Yeah. Uh, you have a different quarterback, Zeb Nolan, at the time that leads NDSU through the spring season that we had at the FCS level. Uh, Cam Miller comes in and replaces Zeb at the end of that spring season. And then going into the following fall, after he had started in the playoffs for NDSU, he wasn't given the job then. They had brought in a transfer quarterback named Quincy Patterson uh, from Virginia Tech at the time. And Quincy won that job in fall camp. 
again, Cam Miller, to his credit, didn't transfer. He didn't win a job. He didn't transfer somewhere and, and just go to a different school and say, well, I'll, I should start here or there. He, he stayed on as the backup about four weeks or five weeks into the season. Quincy has a little bit of an injury in a game. Cam comes in, brings NDSU back in that game. They win it against Missouri State, and he has started every game since then, including a national title, and he has gotten better each and every year. The completion percentage has gotten up. They have asked him to yeah. do more at the lines of scrimmage. The interceptions have gone down. And last year when NDSU had lost a couple of games early in the season and things were honestly looking a little bit down, looking a little bit, I wouldn't say desperate, but uh, definitely not the way NDSU had been in past years. Cam Miller was a huge reason why, and the passing game was a huge reason why they had a little bit of a turnaround towards the end of the season. So he's had a crazy career. It would be yeah. really fun for him this year to be able to cap it off with a win against an FBS team, something he doesn't have on his resume that other quarterbacks here do have, and to win another national title to get in that conversation. And the big thing for him is he has to beat SDSU. He has not done that uh, yet in his career uh, to this point, but been a great quarterback. Yeah, we're going to get to that opportunity he has against the FBS team later, but I want to talk more about some of the guys. Uh, Cole Payton um, is the backup quarterback, but um, just looking at the stats, I mean, he's one of the top rushers on this team. Um, having not watched you guys a lot, uh, did, did they use him sort of like a Taysom Hill? Like, how is he used? Well, he's, again, another story of a guy that in today's era could have transferred anywhere and probably been a starting quarterback, but he has stuck on behind Cam, and I give Cole Payton so much credit for that, but they use him. He is not yeah. just, uh, you know, a, a package here or a package there. Uh, he will get on almost in every series. There were games last year, uh, I think, in our opener against Eastern Washington at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities, he had a whole series. It was like Cole Payton series. So that will happen from time to time. Now there is a yeah. new offensive coordinator along with a new coaching uh, head coach and Tim Polisek. They have Jake Landry at offensive coordinator. So how will he get used is a little bit of a question mark to all of us as well. Uh, with yeah. a new system to be put in place, but he's, he's special uh, on the ground. He's faster than you think. And he's got the size to, to be able to run through some tackles as well. I've uh, been used in some short yardage areas, but Cam Miller can run as well. You know, when you talk about Cole Payton's rushing ability, but Cam can run too, and it's kind of a, yeah. a dual monster there in the backfield sometimes. There's going to be a lot of packages. I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if in that Colorado game there's some uh, some different packages maybe with both quarterbacks on the field. Yeah, so defensively uh, – well, let me, let's stick with offense. One more question offensively. What do you think you're going to get with the Tim Polisek offense? I mean, what's this going to look like? I think – he is a bison through and through. So the uh, old adage of if it ain't broke, don't fix it is going to, to hold true. There's going to yeah. be a lot of running the ball. Um, that always will be a staple of NDSU offenses. They have a good offensive line. They are replacing three uh, yeah. from last year to this year. So it's a little bit more uh, than maybe in some past years, having to replace a couple of guys on that offensive line, just with two returning starters. But NDSU always has backups at that line of scrimmage. And they're always pretty physical there. Uh, Tim Polisek wants to win games in the trenches, wants to win games in the line of scrimmage. So I would expect a lot of running the ball, uh, controlling the clock a little bit, but you do have an experienced quarterback in Cam Miller. There will be yeah. an element of that. Jake Landry, a guy that comes from a quarterback background in his coaching tree. Um, there is going to be a, a different element, I think, in the passing game more than there has been in years past. And it is interesting that you bring it up because Tim Polisek, if you go back through the coaching lineage here at NDSU their past coaches almost all of them for a long time here have been defensive minded they've come as either a defensive coordinator or a defensive coaching background in their coaching careers Tim Polisek's the first in a long time here of having an offensive mindset and yeah. being on that offensive side so I do think there'll be a little bit more of the passing game uh, maybe unleashed but this is still going to be I think a, a run first offense where they want to win and establish things at the line of scrimmage yeah, uh, and switching over to defense, a, a lot of guys back, including um, several all-conference players, uh, Dylan Hendricks, look at my list here, Logan Kopp, and Cole Wisniewski, who you know you mentioned before, but eight interceptions last year, he led all of Division One. that's FBS mm -hmm. and FCS, and so um, you, know, you mentioned him as a special player. Uh, talk about that defense and kind of those guys, and um, you know how good is this defense for NDSU? I think it's going to be a lot improved. I, I do mm -hmm. think there's a serious improvement for them to make from last year to this year. In the games NDSU lost last year, you can go back and look, and the, the running defense, the rush defense just wasn't quite there. They weren't as yeah. dominant at the lines of scrimmage, and tackling sometimes was an issue last year. I think that's going to be 
not completely 100% fixed. Like they're never going to miss a tackle ever again, but yeah. it is going to be vastly improved from last year. And like you said, they have a number of guys back. Um, the offense loses some pieces, but on defense, you have almost everybody uh, back of serious importance. You do have, like you said, Dylan Hendricks, who had a phenomenal second half of last season and unfortunately missed our final playoff game. Otherwise, I think NDSU maybe has a chance to, to go back to a national title game. Um, you do have both of the most starts in the middle. And and they play a huge part, Eli and Will. I know a lot of, a lot of times Eli gets the uh, publicity, but Will does a great job in there as well. And they have backups on the line of scrimmage. And then one more name to throw in there that didn't play last year is Hunter Zenzen. He would have been a starting defensive end and would have played a huge role on defense, a transfer from Iowa State, right. but he got hurt in fall camp and missed the entire year. So now he's back. And to have him as a defensive end opposite of Dylan Hendricks, the best NDSU defenses have always had two great pass rushers, and they've had depth there where they've been able to rotate guys, especially on the interior of the defensive line. They have that. They have a lot of guys back. They have Logan Kopp back, who had a phenomenal sophomore season, the number of interceptions and fumbles. And he's a player that maybe isn't always the most athletic, but he's so smart. He's always in the right spot. It just seems like he finds himself around the ball has a knack for it. And then Cole Wisniewski, a guy that was a linebacker, converted to safety last year, brand new position with a yeah. new defensive coordinator last year, and is an All-American. I mean, the, the job he did and the number of interceptions, like you said, leading all of Division I uh, was really, really impressive. To have kind of those three levels of the defense, you have a leader in all three and you have a number of guys back, I think the defense is going to be really improved because the pass rush is going to be so much better. If there's a a question mark, it's a little bit at the corner position, but when you've got the pass rush that I think NDSU expects to have, that's going to ha help the uh, secondary a lot. Yeah. Well, I don't know if Buff fans like to hear that because uh, Shador Sanders was the most sacked quarterback right. in the country last year, and so they feel like they're better on the offensive line. So I think that sounds like it might be a good test for that new offensive line for Colorado to see how they can do against NDSU's pass rush. But uh, the, the game itself um, – NDSU, in addition to the titles, uh, one thing that they're known for around the country is uh, beating FBS teams. And you mentioned that Iowa game in 2016. That might be uh, might be the biggest one they've had in, in the group, but that was the last one. You know, it's been a while since they've beaten FBS team. They've only played one, I believe, since 2016. Went down to Tucson and and lost a close one to Arizona. Um, is is North Coast State still that scary team that they were from like 2010 to 2016 to where, uh, you know, Colorado's got to watch out for them? Yes, you do have to watch out for them. This is not a team you can say, well, week two is against Nebraska. Let's just go prepare for the Huskers. You know, this, yeah. this is not sometimes you see those games and it happens every year. You bring in some team from a lower level and there's a lot of 50 to sevens or 40 to nothings out there. Yeah. That's not what this game is. That's not what NDSU is going to bring into it. They have every bit of confidence in, in winning this game and being able to compete for it. And Tim Polisek has said before, you know, take them into the deep end and see how you swim. And, and yeah. we're okay with that. Uh, the goal is to make it a fourth quarter game and see what happens at that point. But you mentioned it, NDSU has won a number of these FBS games. They have lost their last one there against Arizona, but that was one that could have gone either way. If it's not right. for a King Miller fumble at the goal line, they probably win that game too. Um, so they've won them before. They know what it takes. And I think this team that a lot of them don't have an FBS win. Again, that's something they try and compare themselves versus other eras of NDSU. Like they don't have an FBS win, many of them, or any of them now at this point, because you haven't had a win there since 2016. They would have played Oregon in 2020, but COVID unfortunately took that one away. And when you win as yeah. many FBS games as they've won, the chances to play them become few and far between because no <laughs> one's really signing up for it. So uh, NDSU has every expectation of being able to win this game. You know, got to go out and prove it. And it's definitely different now than when uh, the contract was signed a number of years ago with Dion now taking over with uh, Coach Prime there in Colorado for you guys. But mm -hmm. I think NDSU and the fan base has every expectation of being able to go in there and, and compete for it. So from what you've seen being around the program uh, as a student and, and covering them, what makes NDSU different in that they're not phased by going into that FBS stadium? Because you mentioned there are a lot of those 50 to seven type of games where uh, they're, they're just uh, uh, the contract games, right? <laughs> you're yeah. you're going to, you're going to grab a paycheck and then uh, go off back to your, uh, your little conference in your lower level. Right. But no NDSU, uh, they come in there and they like, we're, we're going to win this game. Why, why do you think they're different in that regard and that, they don't back down and that they enjoy this atmosphere? Well, a couple of things. One, 
like anything in life, once you've done it a couple of times, once you've gotten a couple of wins, you believe you can do it, right? You have to yeah. do it first and, and see it happen before you can believe it. So once you start winning a couple of them, uh, then you, you believe you can do it. And they've had a, a number of those wins from Minnesota to Iowa State, Kansas State, Iowa. They, they've been able to get some of those victories. Uh, so that leads you to believe you can do it. And then you've also played in other big games, you know, playing in national championship games, which FBS wins are great. They're not bigger than winning a national title uh, for, for fans around here and for the right. teams. So when you've played in those pressure moments and you've been in those situations, I, I think you're just more confident you're able to come up with a victory. And there's been some FBS games where it hasn't all been pretty, where they've had to come out with, with plays there late. Uh, against Iowa, they had to get a game-winning field goal. They were down late in that game and, and got the field goal to get the victory. Against Iowa State, they were down 14 nothing, and they won that one in more lopsided fashion, but they were down early in it. Yeah. Uh, Kansas State, you needed a drive by by Brock Jensen. They got that one late, and that one lives in bison lore. So they've been in those situations where they've had to come up with it, and they just have been able to do it. So I think falling back on that experience definitely helps. Even though these players weren't around for those ones, they yeah. know what's happened before. And I think the brand almost kind of speaks for itself. I'm a believer in you create your own luck. And I think yeah. being on NDSU, you can't just win because of the helmet, but I do think that provides a little bit of a sense of confidence for even this generation of, of Bison players. And then they win games physically. They they go into those games. I give our strength and conditioning coach here, Jim Kramer, is one of the guys when you're talking about Mount Rushmore, like coaches and players go up there, but we probably put a strength and conditioning coach up there. He has meant yeah. a ton to this program. And it's just, they've been tougher. Like even against Iowa, they were able at the end of the game to control the line of scrimmage against Iowa, a team that prides themselves on physicality on the, in the lines of scrimmage. Like NDSU has just done a very good job of getting to the fourth quarter, being better conditioned early in the season and being able to wear down their opponents. And if they get it to the fourth quarter, they feel like they have the advantage. And in most of those games, they have. Uh, a couple last things before I let you go, but are there a lot of North Dakota uh born players on the team oh yes okay it, it's, uh, a lot of of north dakota born players around um yeah. they, they have a a region of the dakotas north and south dakota minnesota wisconsin iowa and there's a, a fairly good amount usually from nebraska then you get your okay. players from iowa they do go in and they get players from florida they had a commit just a couple of days ago out of tampa florida christian watson a great receiver coming from tampa florida uh, so they've they've gone to other places as well uh, but their main area is that upper Midwest in terms of a recruiting base. And they get a lot of talented players out of the state of North Dakota. Yeah. I think one thing that has happened uh, kind of ironically is now that you've had some coaches have success and then leave from, you know, Craig Bowl to, to Chris Clymans at Kansas state. Now Matt Entz as well, obviously they know there's talent in this state. So yeah. some players have, you know, some of the top players in the state have gone to a Kansas state in the past or a few other places, which I think the secret's getting out a little bit, uh, but still the most talented players at NDSU or in the state of North Dakota are choosing NDSU. And there's a lot of them and they get a lot of walk-ons too. There's a, yeah. a long legacy and a proud legacy of walk-ons who play maybe nine man football or really, really small schools in farm country. And they walk on usually as an offensive or defensive lineman and they become a really, really good player. NDSU has sent a number of players, even to the NFL, yeah. through that pathway of a walk-on that puts on the pounds and, and loves to be a bison, maybe has a family a lineage connected to the school, and, and they go on to be great players. So That's awesome. I, I was just thinking that if there was a lot, if there is a lot of North Dakota players on the team, I imagine that even if they haven't beat that FBS team, a lot of them were kids when – when they beat yeah. Iowa and saw it, you know, and so they yeah. know what that feels like. And so, so yeah, they, it makes it a scary game. And I, I can't imagine there's been a whole lot of Buffalo versus Bi Bison matchups, you know, where it's, you know, it's really Buffaloes and Buffaloes, right? Yeah. Bison and Bison. So um, it's going to be a fun one. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Are you coming out to the game in Boulder? That is the plan. Hopefully okay. they're hoping to be out there. And uh, we have a daily radio show here on Bison 1660, hoping to bring that one since the game's on a Thursday, yeah, uh, on a Saturday. So hoping to bring the show down there and, I can tell you, I know that the allotment is what the allotment is for, for NDSU in terms of their tickets they get for the game. But uh, Bison fans, we we love these ones. They're few and far between, as I said. You yeah. don't get one every year. So um, our fans usually make plans every year to go down to Frisco, Texas, where the national championship game is. Uh, but also, there's a lot of fans that make these destination games a, a must-go-to moment as well. I would expect a good amount of uh, green and gold down in, in Boulder and the surrounding areas for that Thursday. Yeah, well, it's going to be an exciting one. I mean, not only opening day uh, for both teams, um, you know, 
I know the fan base here is excited about uh, Coach Prime's second season. You got Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter, two of the best players in the country. It's on national TV. Uh, you know, uh, you got a premier opponent. It may not be Alabama, but it is that, like we said, that different type of Alabama. Um, it's gonna be a fun game. I'm looking forward to it. I am too. It should be a lot of fun. And I can tell you, like college game day, all those programs will probably talk about it a little bit too. And yeah. it's a, one of those fun games that's going to be good for both programs to kick off the college football season. I know it's not week zero. There's other games before it, but basically kicking off that week one should be a lot of fun, Brian. Yeah. And, and it's huge for both teams, right? It's a, it's yeah. a tone setter uh, for both programs in different ways. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and Andy, I appreciate you joining me and uh, you know, maybe we'll catch up a little bit closer to the game. Absolutely, Brian. Appreciate you having me on. You bet. Thanks.